our esteemed town assessor will present uh, this is actually her follow-up to a September presentation to this board, right, uh, Donna? Yes. And you first introduced the uh, income limits for uh, seniors and uh, disabilities. Uh, and here we are in January for where we're at on those. So I'll hand the time to you, Donna. Okay, so I was here back in September to discuss the limitations on income for two of our uh, popular exemptions for limited income senior citizen and uh, disabled persons with limited incomes. So a brief overview of what we did in September. And I put a link here for our viewers at home. You find this online. Um, there's, there's a link there that should take you to the previous it should take you to the previous um, presentation that I did. Some of these slides will look familiar to you, just to refresh you. Um, we looked at a local option to adjust the income limits for these two exemptions. And what we did is we reviewed what those uh, basic qualifications were for each of those exemptions. We talked about the town board's authority to set the income limitation for the town purposes within the limitations that are set by the statute. And we discussed the statistics from the 2022 assessment role, and we uh, revealed what the Census Bureau talks about from Webster's demographics, so that you would know um, our community from um, population and financial level. Additionally, we discussed the effects of the increase in the income limit and the difficulty of predicting that impact on the taxable value and ultimately on the tax rate for the town. I will remind you that it requires a separate and distinct public hearing for each of the exemptions if you wish to make any alterations to either of the exemptions. And that's kind of a speedy fast forward right up to while we're here, we have the opportunity and the objective is to set the income limit for the 50% level of benefit. And the statute says that can be between $3,000 and $50,000. That's a new higher limit. We are currently, as a town, at $26,000 for our 50% mark. Past that, the statute will set forth certain steps in place to do a graduated as the income goes up slightly up to the total maximum. Um, and, and you don't get to set those. They are already set. You set the 50%. So your options for the 22 2023, excuse me, assessment role is that by March 1st of 2023, you can do nothing and the exemption would remain in place as it has been since 2010. You could lower the town income limit level for 50%. Um, you could raise it up to the 50% benefit that's currently there at 50,000 or anything in between. And if you do nothing, please remember that you can revisit this question in future years go partially towards the ceiling now. You can revisit again in future years. This is not a one-time decision and then you'll be done until the state takes its next move. Unless you go to the maximum. And by way of a reminder, this is the scale as it uh, plays out by that statute of the, the, the uh, benchmarks between the 50%, 45%, 45% to 40% marks. You're currently at 26,000 our maximum 50 and our top end at the 5% discount is 34,400. This is income of each individual applicant's household that we're, that we're talking about for anyone who missed those um, basic qualifications the last time around. The new statewide maximum would begin for 50% at 50,000 and go all the way to the top of a 5% discount for those who are making 58400 in their household. Here's the news slash and why I'm here today. There are five deciding tax jurisdictions that are found in the Town of Webster Assessment Rule. Monroe County obviously encompasses all of our town, and as of January 10th this week, they adopted the new state maximum. Their scale will be the 50,000 to 58,400, and we'll be approving applications for county tax purposes on that level. 
Webster Central School District earlier this week confirmed with me by email that um, they plan to take no action at this point for this coming goal year. They are going to meet their limits exactly as they have been in the past. We will reconsider that in a future uh, year. Town of Webster is pending, uh, the village of Webster is pending, and Wayne Central School District is our fifth jurisdiction. They have 44 parcels. I'm not following that one quite as closely. <laughs> decided to do an informal survey from the assessors. Here's a list of all the towns in Monroe County, and you can see two of them um, plan to go according to assessor conversation. This is an informal assessor survey. Uh, two of them say that their towns and municipalities are planning to go to the new state maximum. For the most part, you can see the number of checkboxes here in the middle column. Most towns are not changing at this time. City of Rochester. Um, is rumored to be anticipating the new maximum along with the county, and the county actually did adopt it this week as we said. So there's a few towns I, I wasn't able to connect with recently, but that's what our neighbors are doing in the county. So the timeline for taking action for the 2023 assessment rule is that you would have had to make a decision by March 1st deadline. Today is January 12th. We have six meetings between now and then, and uh, with the assistance of the town clerk, we've identified two paths of uh, two sets of dates that will get us um, approved by the deadline if there is a change that the town board wishes to make. If you do not wish to make any change, no action or public hearing is required. We'll just continue as we have been. So the, the dates that you can see are there on the screen. You need to follow the yellow path or the green path to your desired destination. And then incidentally, speaking of notices, because <laughs> my mom says, speaking of pianos, when she wants to change the topic, but this isn't really a change of topic. In addition to all the talk that's going on right now with the increased limits for both the limited income senior citizens and the limited income persons of dis uh, with disabilities. There is some brand new legislation hot off the press the end of December that the governor signed that says that we need to do an annual mailing. We being all municipalities must do an annual mailing to all residential properties to repeat a notice that is found in one of their tax bills already. I'm sure there's some um, reasoning for that. I'm not privy to what that is, but it must be mailed separately from the tax bills. Question? Yes. Did the uh, governor is, of course, going to provide funds for municipalities to send out these postcards? Uh, unfortunately, this legislation does not include any funds oh. to the municipalities. I'm shocked. Sure. <laughs> um, the statute actually reads very simply, as you see here at the bottom of the screen. Um, but most assessors find that all that's going to do is make their phones ring because it doesn't tell anybody anything. So it does alert people to the fact that there is such an exemption. Um, it is already on the, on the bottom of tax bills or on the back side of tax bills or inserted with the tax bills depending on you know, how long your county uh, tax bills are across the state. Um, so what we, what we propose is um, what I'm proposing to you, and I need to come to you because it's, it is as a, uh, Jesse pointed out an unfunded mandate, which is surprising us after the budget is already set. Therefore, I do not have the postage in my budget to send out the postcards that the new law is going to require. I can budget for that in the future, and perhaps we can get a little creative about how we can do this more economically. But right now, we've been given 30 day notice to mail out 14,920 notices at 49 cents is uh, one of the op uh, options that I have for a postcard. And we would put a little more information in here, as you can see on the sample postcard from one of the vendors that I was uh, contacting. The best I can do is $7,311. Um, it's, it's great to notify the community. We have the website. We do put publications out. It is on the bottom of every tax bill. This is affectionately called the second notice, but it's really if you're in the village, it's your fourth notice, and if you're in the town, it's your third notice, right? Um, because you get it, everyone gets a school bill, everyone gets a town and county bill, the people in the village will get that bill, and then you would get this notice in addition to it. Um, it doesn't allow us to exclude the people already getting the program. 
and it does not allow us to um, exclude people that we might know are under age 65. I don't know how my records could determine that, but we're mailing them to all residential properties. They may not be owner occupied. I can't determine that from our records, just all residential properties. That's 14,920 mailings this year and more next year, every year. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Supervisor Claire and I are trying to um, find the best uh, price that we can afford at the last minute. The one that you see on the screen in front of you, I would need to give them notice by tomorrow. In order for them to get these printed, uh, they've designed this, this postcard for anyone who is currently using their services to print our tax bills. That was the company that I'm doing that with here. And uh, that's the price of 49 cents. So I would just suggest that people watch their mailbox for the final format because something is coming to a house near you. Um, <laughs> and it will be there by, by uh, first part of February for sure because the statute also is so limited that um, if we follow the exact letter of this statute, and hopefully it will change with some conversation among assessors with the governor's office over the course of the year before next year comes back. But we have to mail it on January 3rd. There's no window of opportunity, so maybe we move our Webster today mailing to January 30th and we put it in there or something. But there's not a window of time. We want it 30 days before the application yeah. deadline. But this year. Yeah. yeah, this year it's too yeah. late because we didn't yeah. know in time to put it into the Webster today or move that mailing data back. Yeah. And that's and those are the types of conversations we're trying to have and thinking we're trying to do in order to just come up with a way that is more economically feasible and uh, fiscally responsible for our for our taxpayers because you know the twenty somethings are going to get this notice and if they and they, they have parents that they're taking care of I think then that's a, a really good notice for them to have. Um, there, are, there are people who need assistance of their adult children. So I don't entirely scoff at that, but at the same time, we know from the dem demographics from the Census Bureau, 20% of our population around numbers are senior citizens. Not all of them own homes. So when you own a business and you're going to send them a mailing, you're looking at an 80% plus miss to the demographic you're trying to reach. But we will respect the laws that are before us. And we will work on uh, proper channels to see what we can do to amend them in the future to make it fiscally and responsible. That is, since you and I have met a couple times in this, I know I missed it the first time. Um, without being disparaging to the lawmakers, attorney general, I assumed, and you know what happens when you assume, and Donna first showed me this, that we had up until January 30th to send this man out. He corrected me in the second day and said, no, 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 it has to be postmarked on January 30th. Is that correct? Or? To be mailed 30 days prior to the deadline. And your the deadline is March 1st. Okay. There's 28 days in February this year, so that brings us to January 30th. Yeah. That's pretty specific. That's, thank you. Well, and there must be a reason that. for that it's specification. Yeah. I think that it is intentional to put it between the mailing of the tax bill and the deadline. Yeah. What it's also going to do is it's sort of an 11th hour when you're talking about a town of this size and other large towns. Um, I know that you know, my, my colleagues who have large towns are, are, are also facing similar situations. Uh, the talk that this was a possibility of the September conference after the last time I was here, um, it was brought up at a conference for a New York State Assessors Association conference. We were talking about it, and some of the people downstate were saying $250,000 in postage for the size of their towns, unfunded, um, unbudgeted. It, it's, it's a difficult pill for all municipalities to swallow, but every homeowner now across the state is going to receive this notice when they're already receiving that notice. And there's other ways to reach our public these days. So um, our, our associations will, will do the proper due diligence. We'll, we'll see how important it becomes to the governor's office. I'm sure there's a fish to cry. But for us, this is this is significant expense. Um, if it were the only notice, that would, that would, it would have a different impact. So, yeah. Okay, 
So that's the end, and this is my screen to leave up there to say if you want more information on exemptions in general, remember that uh, you need to apply by March 1st, which is a Wednesday this year, which is when we are setting the date for the town board on the issue of changing the income limits. Uh, February 23rd is the last day you could possibly vote on that public hearing if you choose to hold one. Is there any questions I can answer for the board? No, 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 I'm suggesting I'm just uh, curious. Many of the uh, jurisdictions and municipalities uh, out there for one and not for the other. No, usually we find that the two will agree because you're looking at your demographics. We have so few um, exemption applications for limited income disabled persons that it doesn't have the same impact against the tax rate that the senior citizens community. Charlie, are you saying that the school district no, no, no. town or are you telling no, 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 I tell you one plus one plus the other. Oh, senior versus the senior. Interesting. Okay, I misunderstood. Just yeah. curious. Um, and I okay, well I you know what I don't want to talk about Jenny, do you have any questions on Bill? No. It's just interesting that the state figures that every town municipality can come up with extra money out of the budget that they're already going to do. And the wallet. You know. Apparently. It's just, you know, anyway. That's our governor. Yeah. Um, Betty? No, I just said the state wants every person in the state to get this mailing. They should send it out. Well, and I, and I gotta say that when Donna and, my, and I have met a couple times in this last week, uh, I was a little concerned that maybe the incidentally part of her presentation <laughs> might throw us off because it's the last thing we saw. And it is very aggravating, this unfunded and whatever. And you know, I've said to Donna, we're gonna try to figure out how to turn lemon into lemonade on this one. But I don't want the board to lose sight of the fact that this is this presentation is the follow-up to the one she did in September, where it was like that that screen right there to me is the most important one. Well, second, because the survey you did spoke volumes to me. That survey spoke volumes, as did the school district's answer about we, in more words or less, in paraphrasing. We want to see what the financial effect is for the county going to the max. Because it is almost impossible to calculate what giving that additional exemption to senior citizens means to what it does to the tax rate of the rest of the citizens. And that really resonated with me, and I will say this. When you look at the yellow brick road and the green brick road or whatever you showed at public hearings and all that, for us to meet this, if we want to change what we're currently at, I'm going to tell you something, that's a heavy lift because this board would have to have by the second or the ninth, what is our proposed change? Is it going to the max? Is it somewhere in the middle? And for my money, uh, no pun intended, and I know we're not voting on a resolution here today, I just, I, I think that we should stand pat and see what happens um, like the school district is with the county to see what kind of effect. Because I think Webster, and this is both the blessing and the curse, we have a, we have a large population of senior citizens that still own their own home. So if we did this and went to the max, this isn't cutting taxes to the, our citizens. This means we're redistributing our taxes to potentially 35-year-old single working families who make $55,000 a year, have a mortgage, who really could have used that exemption more than a 65-year-old that house is free and clear, but is under the income limit. That's an unintended consequence, isn't it? I, there's too much that I don't understand. I, I, for my money, I don't want I think we should stand pat and um, 
you know, I, I don't know. That's how I feel about it, but I also understand that the board's like, no, we, we got to we gotta figure out by the second or the ninth, and we got to follow that schedule, and we got to do something else. Do we need to take a voter resolution? No. If, if we do nothing, we just do nothing? We do nothing. Um, I'm really not in favor of changing this at this point. I'll just say that. Just so that you know, people don't think, well, we're just sweeping under the carpet and forgetting about it. I think we should leave it as it is, and we can revisit it. Um, but, uh, and I think Donna made a very good point when she presented in September, as you just reiterated, there are households that that is their income, and they wouldn't qualify for this because they're not disabled or senior. Um, and, you know, I agree with you, Supervisor. Well, and we'll get data in a year. Right. Of, of, you know, and not for nothing, and, and I, like I said, I don't want to jump on the bandwagon of disparaging the state government and all that. Come on, this is a downstate initiative. This is a downstate initiative, right? Yes. Because with the houses and all that stuff down there, you can't live in the five boroughs in Long Island at $58,000 a year. That's a different area than Monroe County. And we, unfortunately, we get broad brush in state laws, right, Attorney Tennessee? Right. I just, I don't it's know. Just another, another piece of uh, feel-good legislation that uh, looks good on the surface. I don't know how we thought it was going to be. I can't explain how they came up to the numbers, but I can tell you the other piece that I... Uh, talked to you about was the increase in inflation since 2010, which is the last time that you considered an income change. Okay, so I'm not advocating one side or the other, but to make sure you have both sides represented, the last time you made a change to the income stream for this uh, for town purposes was 2010. That was the last time the state put a new maximum out as well. So it's been a long time since anybody has been able to consider it. At that time, the town did not go to the state maximum, so you're still sitting below the former state maximum. And we did a little, I did a little study for you of the inflation rate and what it has accumulated over time. And I do believe that that has one factor of the attrition of the number of applications on our roll. So, I, I say all that to preface your comment, Mr. Supervisor, about we'll have data next year. Let me enlighten what that would mean. Because you are positioned that the county has already um, gone to, because the county has already gone to the state's new maximum. Had they picked any other number, you'd still have speculations in front of you. But they have picked the state maximum, and they've picked that to be in effect immediately. And that means that this time next year, actually by July, I can tell you the impact of at least some people becoming aware of that. Because I'm sure now it will be advertised. We've already begun to answer the questions. We were knowing that this was what they were considering. We already a month ago started answering questions coming to us. Well, the state maximum is 584. Why don't you apply if you think you're under that? We can always deny you if they approve a lesser number. So we're taking in those applications. It'll just take a little while for everyone to become aware of the program. But at least you will have an indication of the shift in the value of the taxable value, or should I say, an increase in the exempt value by the new applications and by the new look at the old applications on a different scale. So all we'll have to do is look at what the county level of approval is for a, an exemption value. And we can just ask our finance director to, to crunch the numbers for us and say, what does that do to our tax rate? And what does that do? Because when you can see what it does to the tax rate, then you know the impact to the non-senior community. Because as I said on September 8th, it's a zero-sum game. The town will never lose money. We're just going to collect the same amount of money from a different part of the tax base. Even the people who would enjoy this benefit must pay on the part that's not benefited a higher tax rate to afford the benefit. Wow. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So that's that's my reader's digest.
just version without crunching numbers to you. And, and, I'm, and I'm saying that, you've never heard me say that about exemptions before, but this is a very significant increase. And I, I think that it's very prudent for you to have a certain amount of caution about the decision. And, and as you said, you will have data next year. You can crunch that out and say no, but I think we could, we certainly can offer benefit on this level now that we know what the worst case scenario, the highest level, I'm sorry, worst case scenario is a bad phrase, the highest level, what that would bring on the largest um, impact to the tax base. Well, this is, this is actually a, almost a 100% uh, increase from where we are now. No, from the, uh, yeah. Yes. I mean, it's, I don't think there's 100% inflation. I mean, I realize there's inflation, but there certainly is 100% cost of living increase in the last 12 years. Correct. And the, and the inflation study that I did last time for viewers who want to go back and, and take a look at the previous presentation, I don't remember that. I didn't bring that with me. Um, but there, there was an inflation rate that we calculated, and this puts it a few years out in advance of that. I know that the Social Security uh, cost of living increase to the Social Security events that senior citizens are going to receive is over 8% in 2023. That's a really large jump. And that 8% alone, if you change nothing, is going to cost some of the people who are teetering around 5% to leave the program altogether. So that has been going on. I think it's good to look at it. I think it's good to have data to make a wise and prudent decision. Look. I, obviously, if, if somebody's not watching this meeting or doesn't see the transcripts or whatever, if they could go, oh my God, the town board doesn't care about uh, people with disabilities or senior citizens. That, that's an easy narrative to throw out there, okay? But the reality is we're, we're, we're elected and our fiduciary responsibility is all the citizens. And we, that, I think we'll have the data. So one year, you're talking about the town tax bill essentially before 2024. Won't have this. But by the time you can come back with data for what it did to the county going to the 100%, at least in Webster, and how many more applications. Did everybody get it? Because it does make sense what she said. We'll be able to at least put our town numbers in there, how much taxable assessed value and equals each rate and all that, what it means that now, um, well, I want to make sure I point to somebody who's not getting a senior exemption, so uh, what is it, 65? 65. Okay. So my house, all right, I'll be 58 in a couple months, all right? Would that have affected me uh, and all the other people under 65 that own houses here by increasing their tax rate 10 cents? Per thousand. We don't know. You don't know. You don't know. And you have a choice to take some step forward, and you always have that choice. This is the new state maximum. You can be anywhere between where you are and the new state maximum. So maybe after you discuss this, and then you see the data coming in July from, from what um, new applications, how that has affected the exemption value for the county. Apply that to the town and say, Let's take steps to get there, but not do it all at once. Work that into the budget over a number of years if you feel that that's a place to be. So I, I don't want to, we don't have to, this is a no, we don't have to do any resolution. We all decide that, and there's four out of five of us here, so if three of us say, yeah, it just doesn't make any sense to do anything right now. I do want to make sure that, and I, I want to turn lemons into lemonade, and that's why this thing we have to send out on the 30th. I want to get our story out there of why we're holding firm, or holding pack right now. You know what I mean? In instead of having us being reactive to the narrative that could get out there, that this town board doesn't uh, you know, have any feelings for our seniors, and, and is it, which is not the case. Um, that's where I think we can turn lemons into lemonade if we do this intelligently. And get the governor's message, the two sentences out there. But since it's got to go to 14,000 houses, of which we know that 80% of them aren't 65 years old, which is whatever, it, it's messaging and it's communicating with the citizens. So at least they think twice if they hear a narrative that 
God, I can't believe it. You know, the county went to 100 you know, went to, they, they respect seniors and the town board doesn't. That, that's not true. Well, that was the message they won't receive that message certainly from our office, but we will publish the 58,400 official limitation. It's only the limitation we can look at for the purposes of the county tax lines on their bills. So when, it, when people give us that application, we look at it once for county purposes, once for town purposes, once for the village, once for the school district that they're at, right? Um, behind the scenes, the computer actually does that for us, but when we're trying to explain it to them, they have one income, but they can walk away with multiple levels of benefit depending on the jurisdiction's decision exactly for this purpose. So I've taken more than my time. That's okay. You know what? I mean, it's, look, we, we, sorry, Jim, You're, we're starting late, but also this extra time, and it's good discussion because it actually will save us hours of, in February, what you just showed we'd have to do on public hearings and all that. If the board, at least the four people here, they've heard enough of like, yeah, probably the town should stand pat and we don't have to start configuring one of those yellow paths or green paths. You good with that, Bill? No, I'm fine. We need, we need a lot more data than we have yeah. to understand the implications. Jenny, mm -hmm. you're good with us standing pat for now? Like yeah. the school district do? I, I agree, but can I, can I put in two cents in the Sure. Stamps? We try the meters. Oh, that's all that is, Balk and Disha oh, and whatever, and, and right. to, that's a, yeah, it's not going down the road. It's a postcard instead of envelope, you know, yeah. um, and it's outsourced so that we don't have to purchase directly the supplies and put the labor into that. You know, paying our people, yeah. they have machines that will do it as much faster than yeah. We're still going to do some pricing actions on that, yeah. because we might, yeah. So anyway. We all good on this one? Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Very Thank you. thorough.